Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here, everyone. Do you want to go to war, Balake? <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, so many people ask me when I'm going to get rid of that intro, and the answer is never. It is hilarious every single time. Welcome back to SPTV, everyone, where every day is one step closer to the imminent collapse of Scientology and hopefully the imprisonment of Scientology's tiny little leader, David Miscavige. What are we talking about today? There is an update in one of the many lawsuits that David Miscavige is facing. You would be forgiven for getting very confused about every time I do a headline about a lawsuit. It seems like, haven't we already heard about this? There's many different lawsuits going on against David Miscavige. And what makes it a little confusing is many of them are Jane Doe verse. <laughs> so today we are talking about uh, the lawsuit that is Jane Doe verse RTC, Religious Technology Center, Church of Scientology International, Lil Captain David Miscavige, Gavin Potter, and Bridge Publications. This is a trafficking lawsuit. Um, I just realized I needed to check something on the back end of this video. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, good. Uh, this is a trafficking lawsuit. And as many of you know, who watch a lot of the Scientology content, Scientology's go-to move on any of these lawsuits is to dig up the arbitration agreements that Scientologists sign again and again and again, promising never to sue Scientology, David Miscavige, other Scientologists for any reason whatsoever. Now, the only exceptions in recent lawsuits to the enforceability of these arbitration agreements has been when the lawsuit was pertaining to activity that occurred after the Scientologist or former Scientologist uh, left Scientology. The arbitration agreements do not can do not carry over, do not apply to things that happened after Scientology. What's interesting about this particular case that we're talking about uh, today is that this lawsuit is pertaining to activity that occurred before uh, this Jane Doe left Scientology. So what is the deal here? Why is Scientology? Why, why is this lawsuit moving forward if Scientology has arbitration agreements? Here's what's so interesting about this one. This Jane Doe was active in Scientology and, and was a Sea Org member before the arbitration agreements were largely in use. And the only copy of an arbitration agreement that they have produced for this Jane Doe is one that was not formally completed and accepted by Scientology. And by their own rules, these agreements are only in force once they have been officially countersigned by a representative of Scientology or when the Scientologist starts their next major Scientology service. And it just so happens that this Jane Doe did not start a major Scientology service after the uh, the form that Scientology has um, turned in was filled out. So it's crazy. Nothing like this has ever come up in a Scientology lawsuit before. So there was a hearing today, just this morning, where Scientology was saying, we basically want, uh, we want to have a hearing on this arbitration thing. Uh, uh, and, and, and the hearing is going to be in May. And we want to put a pause on all discovery, all discovery whatsoever until May. We don't, we don't even want to think about this. And uh, and Jane Doe's attorneys were basically saying, hearing, hearing on what? They haven't even produced an arbitration agreement. We don't have to have a hearing on the subject of arbitration. That they haven't even produced any documents. Okay, so the judge said, look, we're not going to postpone it until May. We'll postpone it until early February. And and he goes, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to put a pause on discovery for the meat of the lawsuit. Remember, I said it's a trafficking lawsuit. This Jane Doe was recruited. Uh, the lawsuit has to do with Gavin Potter and Bridge Publications. Gavin Potter is a, a very well-known Scientology recruiter and fundraiser who was very well-known for recruiting a bunch of underage. Uh, his go-to move was recruiting underage Scientology girls into the Sea Org and then marrying them off to much older Sea Org men. He was notorious for this. This lawsuit, this Jane Doe, is one of the girls that Gavin recruited and then married. Now, you might go, Aaron, you're giving away a lot of information. People could figure out who this person is. 
everything I just said is in the lawsuit itself. So just, just want to say that. Okay. So he said, look, we're going to put a pause on discovery for, uh, for the, the, the complaint itself, but we're not putting a pause on discovery regarding the arbitration agreement. We can do discovery regarding this arbitration agreement itself. And guys, in the thumbnail of this video, I put a uh, photo of Julian Schwartz. Let me show his beautiful face right here. Uh, Julian Schwartz is a gentleman very well known to any former Sea Org member from Clearwater, Florida and Los Angeles. Uh, he's very well known to most public Scientologists um, at this point, probably the most public Scientologists in Los Angeles. Anyone who knows Julian knows that there is hardly anyone in Scientology who has been more actively involved in more scandals, more cover-ups, covering up of child abuse, covering up of sexual assaults, covering up of rapes, than Julian Schwartz. Okay, well, what does he have to do with this discovery? The arbitration agreement that Scientology has produced for Jane Doe is one that was completed in Clearwater, Florida, when Jane Doe just happened to be in Clearwater, Florida, visiting a friend. Jane Doe was an active Scientologist from Los Angeles. Jane Doe's ethics officer was Julian Schwartz. The fact that Julian Schwartz was Jane Doe's ethics officer and was actively involved with her on some ethics stuff is the reason that when Jane Doe was in Clearwater, just visiting a friend, and they're like, hey, while you're here, you should get on a course. Hey, before you get on a course, sign this enrollment agreement that has an arbitration clause. Jane Doe signed the arbitration agreement, but Julian Schwartz refused, uh, Julian Schwartz and the other Scientology officials in LA refused to send any of Jane Doe's files to Clearwater, Florida, because she's their public. She's not Clearwater, Florida public, and she was in the middle of doing stuff in LA. Julian Schwartz himself is part of the reason that Jane Doe never officially started her next Scientology service that would have made the arbitration agreement uh, valid, in force, uh, effective. <laughs> so Julian Schwartz, a guy who the authorities have been looking for for a long time, by the way. Like, I'm sure the grand jury has been looking for Julian Schwartz for a long time. Uh, the guy who knows where all the bodies are buried, the guy who's Miscavige's fixer, the guy who covers up everything is, <laughs> if you ask me, guys, is going to be subpoenaed to be deposed for the discovery about this arbitration agreement that Scientology has produced for Jane Doe in this trafficking case against David Miscavige. And this is amazing. <laughs> It's even better, honestly, in some cases, and I'm sort of kidding here, but sort of not. In some cases, this is even better than the meat and potatoes of this lawsuit itself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, real quick, I'm going to take an opportunity to describe these things in each of these videos because I know it gets very confusing. There's currently, by my count, five civil actions against David Miscavige and Scientology plus a grand jury investigation. One of them is Leah Remini versus Miscavige and Scientology. Uh, that was filed in August of 2023. I've got a little spreadsheet here. I've got to go back and fill in the dates of when all these things were filed. So Leah Remini's lawsuit against Scientology is for the stalking, harassment, fair game, business interference, all that kind of stuff. Bixler versus Miscavige. This is the lawsuit from Danny Masterson's victims and um, a couple of the victims' husbands, one or two of the victims' husbands. Again, the stalking, harassment, the intimidation, the fair game that they've been subjected to since the LAPD reopened their investigation into Dana Masterson in 2016. You have Jane Doe versus Miscavige. That is the lawsuit we're talking about right now. I say versus Miscavige, but it's really Gavin Potter, Bridge Publications, Religious Technology Center, and the Church of Scientology International. We then have Baxter versus Miscavige. That is Laura Baxter, Gawain Baxter, Valeska Paris, all former Sea Org members. They all just happen to live in Australia now, but that lawsuit is in the federal district of Tampa. That is for all sorts of labor trafficking um, uh, against Miscavige personally. You have Haney versus Miscavige in Scientology. That's Val Haney. Uh, she worked directly for David Miscavige and Shelly Miscavige. She is the one who famously had to escape from Scientology's international base in the trunk of a car. Val Haney just was subjected to two and a half days of Scientology's internal religious arbitration last week. It was an absolute shit show. Kangaroo Court doesn't even do it justice. 
Uh, we're going to see if her attorneys succeed in getting that lawsuit pulled out of arbitration and back into the courts. And then, of course, you have the grand jury investigation being run out of Los Angeles into obstruction of justice by David Miscavige, Scientology, Danny Masterson, et cetera. Um, uh, obstruction of justice with respect to the Danny Masterson crimes. Kind of sucks to be David Miscavige, doesn't it, you guys? Yeah. All right. So uh, that's just a quick update on this. I consider this very good news. I have two more awesome videos I'm going to do in the next 90 minutes. So if you're not getting notifications, just check back on the channel and uh, I'll probably be live. Arnie Van Halen, kablam. Steve Britton, is the form still valid if the person isn't given time to read or allowed to keep a copy? Steve Britton, I don't know much. I was raised in a cult. I'm not an attorney. I only play one on YouTube. My understanding is that the precedents, the precedent of the rulings that have been made so far are basically that, yes, these things are still valid even if you didn't, uh, weren't allowed to keep a copy, weren't given time to read it, weren't allowed to, you know, give it to an attorney. Uh, not all rulings are actually precedents and I, i've spoken with my attorney friend zach about this we'll have many more conversations about this but steve the best answer i can give you right now is so far the answer is yes those arguments have not worked so far all right everyone very brief thanks for hanging out with me stay tuned for more thanks to everyone who watches until the very end and i'll talk to you soon okay if you want to see my rock and roll songs okay quiet on this guitar and if you want to see a, a different one of my videos uh then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe.